Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, sorry this video is a little bit chaotic. Uh, my desk is currently a complete mess because I've been removing steam radiators from my ancient Victorian house and um, it basically means that everything is kind of up in the air. Well, I see it would be helpful if it if they were up in the air because then they would just float out of the house instead of me having to carry very heavy metal objects. Okay, so none of that is to do with Inkscape. Let's get down to business. The great news this week is that the PDF work is finished. Um, it's merged. It managed to pass its uh, review processes. Um, all of the tests, the 177 new PDF tests that test all of the rendering functionality are complete. They all pass, which is great. Um, the remaining items are that they uh, we don't have a Mac OS build yet. Um, Rene says that he needs to work on compatibility to see which versions of Mac OS we'll, we will be able to support. But for now, no Mac OS builds are possible with Capy PDF. Um, there are some last remaining issues to do with uh, color tinting. We think that the colors are slightly darker than they are than they should be, but this is probably due to the way in which we are setting up our um, color pro profiles when we first create the PDFs. So it should be a relatively straightforward thing to fix, we think. Um, and then there's some last remaining bugs with context stroke and context fill, which Tav has kindly fixed. So those have actually been resolved. Okay. So what's next? I sent a message on social media and if you responded and got involved, thank you very, very much. Basically, uh, the next steps is to develop the color management functionality inside of Inkscape itself. There's no good us being able to export PDF files with CMYK if it's impossible for you to select CMYK colors inside of Inkscape. You'll notice that Inkscape has for the longest time had a CMYK tab in the color selector, but this is not using CMYK. This is actually red, green, blue. It's just translating those selections. And you'll notice that they become very erratic when you start sliding those colors around. Um, when you are actually using CMYK, those that erratic behavior disappears, right? Because the data that's being saved into the SVG is in CMYK, right? Same thing goes for color profiles using ICC. Um, I want to give a shout out on a Thank you to everybody who was involved in the discussion. We needed to talk basically about the um, processes that um, the users will expect to be able to interact with. This includes um, the um, discovery about like what colors are being used in a document. So when you open it up, how do you tell the, the artist what profile or what color system that they're currently using? Um, how do you explain to users and teach users about the difference between selecting colors and rendering colors and outputting colors because these are different things and involve uh, and, and you would choose them for different reasons um, how do you teach about um, print uh, previewing and how do you get to a stage where people can select things like spot colors and various other things um, in a progressive way so we don't have to write everything immediately we can sort of work our way up to the more comprehensive versions of Inkscape that have the full color management stuff. So a lot of it, this is going to be involve um, user experience design. Uh, a shout out goes to Adam, obviously, because he's great at this stuff and really helps with setting up um, UX based stuff. When I finally arrive on some designs, I will probably run some UX experiments. If you would like to be involved in being one of the users that tries out those designs, please let me know. I'm always interested in you know, new people who I haven't talked to before and their opinions and uh, perspectives on how color management should work in Inkscape. Um, some other stuff that's been going on. Uh, so Google Summer of Code has kicked off. Inkscape has been given five slots. We requested seven. Um, apologies to the two students who didn't make it this year. Um, the five should actually be pretty good though. Um, they involve everything from um, improving our um, geometry mathematics for Shape Builder and things like that, um, to um, Adobe Illustrator file format improvements, and uh, so on Canvas spell checking, and a couple of other things. So um, welcome to those stu students, and good luck on your pro projects. Um, the 1.4.2 release has been tagged. It is happening. 
Uh, Rene is building the macOS releases this weekend, and we should have the ability to um, announce that release very shortly. That means that all the translations are done. Um, Vector's team is ready to announce it. So um, good luck to everybody, and um, thanks for getting this difficult release out. Um, with the crashes that happened in 1.4.1, it was tricky to you know get everybody back together to you know make a new a new release. This sometimes happens. Um, and we yeah we've been talking more about like what's going to be happening in 1.5 and some other new features. Uh, Mykov has put together a um, an ability to export to animated GIF. Uh, that will be really interesting to see people experiment with. Um, it's limited in certain ways, so it's not a, not quite as expressive as, say, for instance, GIMP implementation would be, because we're not a raster pro program. It has to pretend in certain ways about like what a frame is, um, and we're certainly not using smile animations or anything like that. So take that for for, for what it's worth. But it is interesting to see, and um, yeah, there's been a bunch of other improvements uh, to the code. You know, generally trying to improve the test suites, generally trying to improve the, the um, code base and refactor some things. We've been talking more about LPs and um, trying to make sure that we can evolve into a more comprehensive and uh, easier to understand and develop for project. Just makes sure that Inkscape has a better footing in the future. Um, but yeah, that's probably about it for this week, for this meeting, uh, for this video, sorry. I've been doing too many meetings, man. Um, the Inkscape developer team, or I should say the Inkscape contributor team, will be meeting in Nuremberg uh, shortly as a part of the Libre Graphics Meetup. And I guess the, the last thing is is to thank everybody who sponsors my work. Basically, I get to work on Inkscape because of your contributions. You help me by paying for my time to work on Inkscape. And in exchange, I get to listen to what it is that's bothering you, right? The issues or the features or the things that you think need to be pushed first. And so, yeah, I, I want to thank you for continuing with your support and uh, making sure that Inkscape has the resources it needs or the, the people that, you know, can actually spend the time on it and um, make sure that it's positioned in a way that's important for you. So, um, yeah, until next time, thank you for sticking with me. Thank God we got this PDF stuff done. We can now move on to the next tasks.